This is a HP Compaq 8200 Elite, a former office workhorse that's seen at least a decade worth of documents, spreadsheets and emails. And now it's in my hands so I can show you how to refurbish and upgrade it. This Compaq 8200 Elite is the base model of the Slim Form Factor Edition, featuring an Intel Core i3 2100, 2GB of DDR3 RAM and a basic 500GB hard drive. It features the Intel Q67 Express chipset, meaning any Sandy Bridge Intel processor can be put in it, making it a versatile base for a useful computer. It would do a great job as a starter home server machine, or even a personal computer. The power can be put there if you really need it. On the front, you'll find an optical disk drive, an external 3.5 inch drive bay, four USB 2 ports, a headphone jack, and a combined headphone microphone jack, useful for allowing two people to listen to the machine using two separate pairs of headphones. On the back you'll find an IEC C13 power connector, audio out and line in jacks, PS2 keyboard and mouse connectors, an RS232 serial connector, a VGA connector, one DisplayPort connector, six more USB 2 ports, gigabit ethernet, and four low profile PCI brackets. This Compaq is slightly larger than the small form factor Dell Optiplex I refurbished last week, and unlike the Optiplex, it's not really meant to stand upright on its side. It is also absolutely full of dust, so let me show you how to take it apart, clean it, refurbish it, and maybe even upgrade it. Timestamps will be available so you can skip to any part you need. The machine can be opened by pulling up a latch and then removing the cover. This reveals the probably dusty insides, which you can clean using compressed air or a pump as I'll be doing. To remove the front panel for cleaning, detach it from the clips on the top and pull it off when it's loose. As you can see, this machine is absolutely filthy from the time it's been used. These machines don't feature any sort of air filtration, so they suck in absolutely everything. I really do strongly recommend you dust these outside, as it can make a massive mess indoors since the dust can rub into any sorts of carpets or clothes. Later on I cleaned the front of this machine more thoroughly with an old toothbrush. You may also notice a set of spare screws in the front of the machine, a reminder of how repair friendly computers were only a decade ago. To replace the panel, align it at the bottom and press the clips back into place. If you would like to upgrade or replace the hard drive, lift up the optical drive until it clicks into place and unplug the existing hard drive. Then you can lift up on the power supply, push on the green plastic tab, and slide the hard drive forwards and pull it out of the bay. Afterwards, remove the mounting pieces with a Torx T10 screwdriver or a thin enough flathead screwdriver, and replace them on the replacement hard drive as shown here. You can reinstall the hard drive by aligning the mounting screws with the spaces in the bay and lowering it into place, and then pushing it towards the power supply so the green latch makes a click. If you would like to upgrade or replace the memory, press the clips holding the memory modules down and to the side as shown here to release the stick, and open any more clips you would like depending on how many sticks you want to add. Align the modules you want to install with a slot, and press down the modules firmly on each side so the clips click back into place. Then you can pull the optical drive and power supply back down again. If you would like to upgrade or replace the processor, remove the shroud by removing any cables from the cable tidy on the side and pulling the shroud upwards. Then begin unscrewing the heatsink from the motherboard using a Torx T10 screwdriver, alternating between different screws to keep pressure on the processor even. Remove the processor by pulling out the retention lever and lifting it so the socket opens. Then lift the processor from the gap in the socket gently, making sure not to drop the processor which could bend the pins in the socket. Then clean the old thermal paste from the processor with tissue and alcohol and do the same with the cold plate of the heatsink. You can easily upgrade the processor in this machine to anything ranging from a more powerful i3 to the most powerful i7 from the Sandy Bridge era. However, I'll stick to the normal Core i3 for this. To install the processor, align the golden triangle on the corner with the white dot on the corner of the socket, and lower it gently into the socket so it is seated. Then, lower the retainer and make sure the tip goes snugly under the head of the screw in front of the socket. Push the retention lever down gently and tuck it under the protrusion from the retainer. 
Then you can apply thermal paste and install the heatsink again, aligning the screws with their corresponding holes. Tighten the heatsink securely, alternating between different screws to keep pressure even on the processor. If you would like to clean an intake fan, take off the front panel as was shown at the time on screen and unclip the fan shroud from the metal panel, remembering to disconnect the fan from the motherboard. The fan assembly can be cleaned easily with an old toothbrush and compressed air. However, if you blow the dust out with compressed air or a pump, keep the fan blades still as blasting them with air and then rotating at high speed with the pushing force against them can damage the bearings. Afterwards, the assembly can be clipped back into the place and the connector can be reattached to the motherboard. Then the front panel can be reattached as shown earlier. After all of that, you can place the lid back onto the machine by aligning the tabs with their corresponding spaces and pushing it down firmly, and you will have a refurbished and maybe even upgraded HP Compaq 8200 Elite. I will most likely be selling this machine, but you can do whatever you wish with yours. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, please like the video and maybe even subscribe, although my content isn't very related most of the time. If there is anything you want to tell me or have any questions you want to ask, don't hesitate to comment them on this video, and I'll try to respond as soon as I can. I'll see you later.